Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and inside this video, I'm going to be talking about the origin, insertion, and action of pectoralis major. So let's get right into it. Pectoralis major is the first of the four pectoral muscles that we spoke about, and we're going to look at the structure of that muscle, and you can see that muscle here outlined in red. And what you'll notice about this muscle, it's a fairly large muscle, relatively speaking, and you will notice that it has a clavicular portion or a clavicular head, and then we have another portion that's called the sternocostal portion. So that's the sternocostal portion is here, and the clavicular portion, let's do that in green. So that's the clavicular portion. Uh, let me finish it off. In green and then in blue here we have the sternocostal portion and you can kind of see a separation in between. If I remove that you can see that separation here. So when it comes to the origins we have to distinguish between those two portions. The clavicular portion it's called that because it's attached to the clavicle. All right, so the clavicular head, the origin is going to be the anterior surface, so the front, of the medial half, not the entire clavicle, but just the medial half of the clavicle. So once again, the origin of the clavicular head is the anterior portion of the medial half of the clavicle. Then we have the sternocostal head, and the origin here you can see, of course, it's sternocostal, so it has something to do with the sternum and it has something to do with the ribs. Uh, the word costal comes from the Latin word costa, which refers to ribs. And the origin of the sternocostal portion, as you can see here, some of it at least, uh, number one, it's going to be the anterior surface of the sternum. And the part that you can't see is that it's also attached under here to the upper six costal cartilages. So the upper six costal cartilages. And then it's also attached on the inferior portion, the inferior section of the sternocostal portion that is attached to the aponeurosis, the aponeurosis. And we write that out here. aponeurosis or aponeurosis, depending on where you're from, of the external oblique muscles. Now you can see the external oblique muscle here. It's one of the abdominal muscles. And the aponeurosis, we have this flat tendon-like um, substance here. It's a flat, kind of like a flat tendon um, that we call the aponeurosis. And that's where we're going to have the final part of the origin of the sternocostal portion. So that's the origin. Then let's look at the insertion point. You can see it's going towards the humerus, but it's going to attach to a very specific portion of the humerus. And that's going to be here. We have the greater tubercle, and then of course we have the crest of the greater tubercle, which is the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove. Um, and it's going to attach right there on that crest. So it extends from the origin point to the crest of the greater tubercle or the lateral lip or the lateral border of the intertubercular sulcus. Now, what's going to happen when this muscle contracts? What is the action? Well, as we mentioned before in the previous video, when a muscle contracts, you can basically imagine the insertion point or the bone that it's inserted on to move towards the origin. Okay, so uh, if we're dealing with the clavicular head, what's going to happen if this contracts? You can just picture it as that contract is going to move the arm in that direction. Basically, what it's going to do is elevate the arm, and this is not a 3D thing, so I can't fully show you how that it would be, but you're basically raising your arm. 
Now, I want you to do something. Take your left hand and put it on the clavicular portion of your pectoralis major. And then I want you to tense your arm and move it up. What happens? You feel that muscle contracting? I'm doing it right now and I can feel that. Um, that's because that muscle is involved as you tense and kind of move it up sternly. You're going to feel that muscle, that, that um, clavicular portion of your pectoralis major contracting. Now, what's going to happen when the uh, sternocostal portion contracts? Well, one of the things that it's going to do is it's going to uh, it's going to um, extend the arm. So it's actually working opposite to the clavicular head. It's going to extend the arm. So we're moving it back down. That's what that's one of the actions. Now, if we take the entire pectoralis major as a whole, what that does is it adducts the humerus. So if the arm is extended in this direction and that muscle, um, well, not extended, sorry. If the arm is abducted, abduct, uh, if it's in this direction and that muscle contracts, it, it's going to cause a deduction, adduction, and move that arm back towards the trunk. Okay, so the, if you take the muscle as a whole, it adducts the the humerus, but it also helps because of how it's contracted. It also causes internal rotation. So you rotate your arm inwards. Uh, that is going to be accomplished also by the pectoral, the pectoralis major. So we have a number of different things that this muscle can do because of the structure, because of how the fibers are running, because you have these different portions. Uh, depending on how it contracts, you can move the arm in different ways. So let's do a quick review. This is pectoralis major. When we're dealing with the origin, you can, uh, by the way, if you want to quiz yourself, you can turn the volume down right now. Um, the origin, if we're dealing with the clavicular head, that's the anterior surface of the medial half of the clavicle. If you're dealing with the sternocostal head, uh, that's going to be the anterior surface of the sternum and the upper six costal cartilages. And lastly, the apneurosis of the external oblique. The insertion point, it's going to insert on the crest of the greater tubercle or the lateral border of the intertubercular sulcus. And the action, the clavicular head is going to cause flexion of the humerus. The sternocostal head is going to cause extension of the humerus. And if we take the entire muscle together, it adducts the humerus and also causes medial rotation. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you'd like more like this and many other resources to help make biology fun, visit the website at interactive-biology.com. This is Leslie Samuel. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.